I'm a pretty positive guy. I like Bakugan a lot, I like toys a lot, and I don't really like to complain because none of this really matters all that much. But perhaps, just this once, as a treat, let's be bad. Hi, I'm Jack Huso, and today I'm going to be mean to some toys for children. I ask you to tell me the worst Bakugan of all time. And most of you named the same two Bakugan, so I didn't have a lot of options, but I've added a bunch of my own picks to your votes. So let's take a look at the top 10 worst Bakugan of all time. If you personally like any of the Bakugan on this list, don't let me change your mind. Taste is subjective, and I promise this is all in good fun. This video is sponsored by Bloodline Heroes of Lithus, an action-packed hero collector RPG with one of the coolest gimmicks I've ever seen in a mobile game. Not only can you unlock and expand a huge kingdom, not only can you fight enemies with strategic but easy to understand gameplay, but as you collect champions, you can combine their bloodlines to make new hybrid characters. Cross a demon and a werewolf, and you make a demon werewolf. Vampire Elves, Dragonborn Orcs, there are over 800 different hybrid champions to create in Bloodline. Bloodline Heroes of Lithus has just put out a new Lycan Werewolf Clan, Gultung, for Christmas. They're the biggest damage dealers in the game, and just like every other creature, they can be combined into new and awesome hybrids as you play. For a limited time only, you can get a Gultung Champion for free by participating in the Christmas event starting December 22nd. In short, Bloodline looks stunning, plays smoothly with vertical screen controls for easy on-the-go play, and boasts interesting storylines for the world and the characters as you play through the game. So download the game now for free on both Android and iOS using my link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen right now. You'll get a starter pack worth $20 with 3 stamina potions, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamonds. And be sure to pick up that free Lycan Champion starting December 20. Second. And without further ado, let's start the countdown. Number 10, Scaboid. I think the reason for this choice should be obvious. Scaboid. That's his name. He's named Scaboid. They thought of that, submitted it, and the brand team said, sounds good. Kids are gonna love Scaboid. Well, kids don't love Scaboid. And not just because his name sounds like a creative insult nickname a third grader would come up with. Scaboid sucks as a toy. The design looks fine, but I own like three of these and none of them stay closed. Its latching mechanism is so sensitive that if you really squeeze it in, it'll kind of lock, but then it pops open a second later. It doesn't work, so there's that. But also, Scaboid! Scab! Nothing can redeem anything with scab in its... Oh, that, oh, oh, what, that's cute. Okay, Scaboid is only number 10, instead of higher up, but only because of whatever cute nonsense is going on right here. Moving on. Number nine, White Naga. This one is a personal beef. Naga, yeah, that Naga. The video game exclusive Naga. But Jekuso, Naga's a great Bakugan, and he was such a good villain in the anime, and the video game is so good, I love the video game, and the reboot freaking sucks with all of it. <laughs> Shut your frickin' mouth! This white, factionless Naga toy came as an exclusive with many copies of the Bakugan Battle Brawlers video game. And as a Bakugan, there's nothing wrong with it. It's factionless, it's pearlish, it's Naga from the show. Except, it's not. This toy was never in the show. There was only a ball form for Naga's evolution in the show, and that one didn't come out as a toy in real life, so that's real great. We can maybe assume if normal Naga ever did turn into a marble in the show, he might have looked like this, but he didn't. So really this toy should be called Nino, Naga in name only. But none of that is why he's on the list. He's on the list because it should have been Leo. Be honest with yourself. Even if you like this toy, you know it should have been a Leonidas. Leonidas, our partner Bakugan who was unique to the video game, and yet the exclusive was this pale little creep instead. He doesn't even look like Naga. Naga doesn't have a forward pointing horn, he doesn't have blue accents, and his wings should look like an elderly butterfly. No, he's just an Eno. Next! Number eight, Rubenoid. 
I actually like Rubenoid. It has a super unique gimmick, boasting a smooth and polished outer skin like a gemstone. Look, I have two of them. Its design is reptilian and kaiju-like without looking like a dragonoid, and it's the only translucent Bakugan we ever saw in the show. I don't really know why it's on the list. It's a pretty good... Oh, uh... <laughs> Hey, there's another one. Cool. Um, anyway, like I was saying, it's a cool and unique Bakugan with no- Oh, uh, okay, no, uh, that's probably enough Rubenoids, I think. Oh, nope, okay, more? Okay, okay, yeah, no, no, okay, no, this entry is personal too. There are too many Rubenoids. I unboxed five darkest Rubenoids from the blind bags that showed up at Walmart in 2021. Oh, and a couple of friends of ours opened an insane amount of Subterra Rubenoids from the same blind bags. And I ended up with even more of them from lots that I've bought. I'm sick of Rubenoid. He's number eight. Number seven, Mutant Talion. Talion is a, a, a boring Bakugan. As Shun's first guardian in Mectanium Surge, he leaves much to be desired compared to iconic characters like Skyrus and Ingram. He's a... He's a guy. He's a dude. I want a cool monster. I don't want some Green Ranger looking Dorcas with a mesh undershirt. He looks like a Walmart ninja costume on Halloween. He looks like you made a man out of a bowl of peas. He looks like the mascot for the concept of eating your vegetables. Now take that and smash it together with Baku Mutants, the worst ball-based gimmick of the entire Legacy series, and we have our number seven, Mutant Talion. If you watch this channel, you already know the problems with Baku Mutants, an ill-advised, badly executed fusion slash combiner system that just doesn't work, either functionally or design-wise. He's an ugly sucker, and being the ugliest Bakugan of the ugliest group of Bakugan? Well, it's unfortunate. In fact, the Baku Mutants would probably all be on this list if they could fit, but instead, Mutant Talion gets to be the honorary sacrifice for them all. If Talion was your favorite Bakugan as a kid, leave a comment that says, You're stinky, Jet Kuso. Sorry. I feel bad making this video. Number six, Skytrus. This is a good one, by which I mean it's a bad one. It's a good bad one. Good at being one of the bad ones. I'm bad. That's good! Skytris has a- ah, uh, no, no, not, not Skyrus. Skyrus is great. This is Skytrus. It's completely different. Skytrus is a Baku Sky Raider, which means it can leap off the ground with its feet springs. Cool. Most Sky Raiders have perfectly acceptable ball forms, with overly powerful springs fully concealed within. And then, for some reason, Skytris has the bump. Oh god. Oh. Why? Why why is it shaped like this? It's so bad looking that they removed the bump from the CG model in the show. That's an admission of guilt. It's excessively hard to roll on a hard surface. I can only do it because of the soft table and playmat that I use. Can you imagine if they released a Hot Wheels car with a bump on every wheel? This is what they do to actual car wheels to stop them from rolling. Moving on. Number five, Battle Planet Hydrus Ultra. I've tried to include Bakugan on this list that are disliked for different reasons. And there's a very specific reason why Battle Planet Hydrus Ultra put a bad taste in the mouths of fans. You can't close it. It looks vaguely like a lion when it's popped open, and closed it was one of the few year one ultras that had a smooth ball form, but you can't close it! I admire the complexity of Battle Planet Ultras, but how many hands does Spin Master think we have? It's not that you can't figure out the correct order given a bit of work, it's just that accomplishing the task requires some serious dexterity. Certain parts have to be held at specific positions, while other parts are moved before the first motion can be completed. Other parts require the Bakugan to be held at certain angles so gravity isn't fighting you. Admittedly though, all of these challenges are not unique among Battle Planet Ultras. Garganoid Ultra, Nobilius Ultra, and Halcor Ultra especially got a not insignificant amount of votes. Those Bakugan tend to look rad enough to justify it. And they actually stay closed after you close them. This little friggin' 
poppy uppy main mechanism tends to be very faulty. Like it's being held in by a microscopic goblin whose fingers keep getting tired. But the biggest problem remains that he can't be closed without grossly clicking things into place how they're not supposed to go. It's the cardinal sin of closing Bakugan. This is a cardinal sin of EDM right here. Sometimes when you're in a rush, you have no choice but to let a few clicks slide. Sometimes you've just gotta crunch it down. Regardless, it should be possible to close every Bakugan without clicks. But I have yet to close a Battle Planet Hydrus Ultra without a click at some point somewhere in the process. That being said, I can close it one-handed in 11 seconds because of a dare, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Number four, Ferascal Ultra. This is Ferascal. What a cute, feisty little cat. She comes from Trash Island with all the other trash Bakugan from season three, and she's the first cat Bakugan we've ever had. Not a tiger, not a panther, not a, a man tiger with wings. She's just a little cat. Meow. Cat? I'm a kitty cat. And I dance, 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 and I dance, dance, dance. What could possibly be so bad about a toy based on a cute little kit? Oh God, oh God, what is that? Oh, that is not a cat. Ma! Ma, there's a weird f***ing straight cat outside! It looks... It looks like Grandma the f***ing thing! I'm gonna cut away gag to the weird freaking cat video. It looks like Rocket Raccoon. It looks like one of those dog costumes with the fake arms. It looks like someone took a taxidermy squirrel, but they didn't have its head, so they just put like an entire pumpkin on there instead. Let's back up. Frascal core looks like this. A design clearly meant to evoke... Uh... Zoobles. And of course, everyone had been asking about what an ultra Zoobal would look like, so I think Spin Master's designers wanted to give it a shot. And credit for the attempt. The design on its own isn't a crime, but the fact that this is the first and only cat Bakugan, it's just very sad. Number three, Alto Brontes. Ah! Oh God, oh, it's the clown again. Oh, why is it always the clown? I mean, I knew it was gonna be the clown. We all knew it was gonna be the clown sooner or later. I didn't know if it'd be number two or number one again. So I just thought, ah! oh God, stop. I've talked about Alto Brontes before. He has the reputation he has because the toy is unrollable, similar to Skytris, but with a ring around its entire circumference. Combine this with how intentionally terrifying he was in the show and you've got a real standout bad egg Bakugan. But this time I do want to mention that Brontes' story in the Nuva Story anime is really good, horrifying and tragic, and honestly one of the most messed up storylines they ever did. Hey, Os Brontes! I hardly recognize him! <laughs> Pay close attention, Bolt. This is what perfection looks like. You turned him into a monster! A really interesting point was made to me as an anonymous ask on my new Tumblr. The suggestion is that the obtuse nature of the toy might actually be intentional because of the messed up and horrible storyline in the show. And honestly, if that's true and this was all intentional, I would take back every criticism I have ever made of Alto Brontes as a figure because I am willing to put design aside if the theming is good enough. But of course, the story does not stop there. The phenomenon of jutting parts on Bakugan marbles is called Alto Brontes disease just because of this guy. And for a while, it was a big problem. Gundalian invaders, Mectanium Surge, and Battle Planet Ultras all fell prey to the clown's plague. But ever since those Ultras, Bakugan marbles have been round? Like, really round, really consistently. Even on Bakugan with crazy gimmicks like Novas and Platinums, it's been like three years without any cases. I think Alto Bronte's disease has been cured, and we didn't even notice. Really, that's the reason why Alto is only in the number three spot. He was a problem, sure, but he's a problem that may eventually be forgotten. The number one spot, by contrast, is going to a Bakugan that is still causing ripples in the Bakugan fandom. 
Number two, Red Skull. Red Skull. The Red Skull. You know, remember Hugo weaving with the cool makeup? <laughs> yeah, that guy's a, he's a Bakugan. Red Skull is a n***y. There's a Bakugan who's a n See. Yes, I am censoring that, but you all know what I'm saying. You all know I'm talking about <laughs> the dominant military political force in Germany during World War II. Of all the iconic villains, Green Goblin, Magneto, Thanos, Ultron, they went with Red Skull. I almost admire the boldness to make such a real villain. And it's a fabulous looking toy. It looks so character accurate that anyone could recognize it. And I don't want anyone to think that I'm genuinely criticizing this toy or Spin Master. It's just, it's weird, man. Being nice to the Red Skull Bakugan is like hearting a tweet where someone is saying how sad they are. It's not that I like that you're sad. I just want to acknowledge it, you know? Originally, this pick was earlier on the list because people didn't really suggest him. And I get that because it's a fine toy. But I think I'd feel bad if I didn't put the literal Bakugan at number two at least. It's insane. With the number one worst Bakugan soon to be revealed, I just want to give a thanks to everyone who has suggested their personal picks. And mostly I want to plug my Patreon. So go to patreon.com slash jetcuso, check it out and sign up as a patron if you want to help me keep this channel going even when the YouTube algorithm is being unkind to me. But without further ado, the moment you all knew was coming. Number one. scruffy-looking nerf herder. I hate him. I didn't realize. I didn't get it. If only I'd known then what I know now. If any of us had known, maybe we could have done something to stop it. The number one worst Bakugan of all time is Kabo. And Kabo. And Kabo and Cubbo and Cubbo and Cubbo and Cubbo and Cubbo and Cubbo and it's all Cubbos! What happened? So two years ago, Cubbo got the number two spot on my top 10 weirdest Bakugan list. At the time, it was funny how many cards had featured the little trash bear. It was funny how he was like Wantu from the old show. I even made a bunch of Cubbo jokes in my big interview with the Bakugan cast. Who's the best character in Bakugan and why is it Cubbo? <laughs> Wait. I actually don't think it's Cabo, personally. Um, yeah, I could just hang up on you right now. Okay, yeah, go for it. All right. Don't, don't call my bluff. <laughs> Can I Google Cabo? Yeah, Google Cabo. C U B B O. His radius oh, is undeniable. Oh wow. Yeah. No, you're right. That's a cute little. At the time, I thought the story of Cabo was joke worthy because it was over. It was just one year one Bakugan, and we were in year two. It was supposed to be the past, it wasn't that big of a deal. It's just weird. But I couldn't have known that the Cubocalypse was still on the way. In Geogon Rising, you see, a wave of what looked like limited collector's edition Cubos was released. Each had a unique package and a character theme. Cowboy Cubo, King Cubo, Magician Cubo, etc, etc, etc. And honestly, this is fine. It's cute. Look, they've got little hats. <laughs> As a limited edition gimmick wave, it should have been no big deal. But then, uh... Well, it turned out to be less of a limited edition and more of an unlimited scourge. By some fluke of production, most of the Bakugan section on most store shelves in 2021 was taken up by a surplus of cosplay cubos and only cosplay cubos. They lingered and lingered and lingered, not selling anywhere near the quantities needed to clear them from the shelves. All of these were massive shelf hogs that barely started to clear by 2020, and then they made more! A second wave of them came out in Bakugan Evolutions, boasting redecos of the same Cubos. And this kind of fun new uh, EDM Cubo. This is a cardinal sin of EDM right here. 
To this very day, shelves all over the world are still covered in a thick layer of cosplaying bears. So how did this happen? Well, it's more likely that retailers overordered the product than Spin Master overproduced the product. I think Spin Master was just trying to have some fun, and the toys are a super playful and charming thing to make. Maybe it's worth it if I can put a top hat on Cycloid now? But either way, no other singular Bakugan character has ever been so destructive to store shelves. So for that reason alone, Cosplay Cubo is officially the number one worst Bakugan of all time. It's a fucking bear! No! <laughs> right there. To take a step back, I've always been critical of adults who enjoy children's brands but act like it's all about them and their adult tastes. That's not what I'm trying to do with my criticism. In truth, there is a place for every Bakugan in someone's heart. Even Kubo, who's actually the favorite Bakugan of my best friend. Sorry. Ultimately, if you love a Bakugan or love a movie or love a show, don't let anyone tell you not to like it. Certainly don't let me tell you that it's bad. That is the last thing I want to do. If you can develop a good critical eye and keep things in perspective with all of their flaws as they are without ignoring them, then choose to love those things anyway. Maybe that's a good path towards happiness. I think it is for me anyway. Thanks for watching. This is Jet Cuso, and I'll see you next time. Hoop! Thanks to my Diamond Patrons, Chell and Immortal Blank, my Titan Patrons, Shivitis, Sierra 107, Varen OC, Big Chunk of 69, Mugwump Shadow, Gusano, and Logan Hill. Thanks also to my Hyper Patrons, Gavin Greenlee, David, Bin Wong, Trouble, Dusk Anthro, Merrick, Mutorios, and La. Blah! Luz and Lana. <laughs> Thanks guys for supporting the channel, and I think I might actually have a little bit of Patreon-exclusive content coming up, so get excited!